One of the great challenges of conveying information in the humanities is that we'll work a lot with texts, sometimes with huge so-called walls of text that present line after line of densely packed information to the reader. As an educator, your job is to break that down, to pick out the parts of a text that you think are important or worth further emphasis, or to show the most important or most relevant information to a class. There's a lot of strategies you can use to do that. One of mine is to use color. Say, for example, I'm constructing a course schedule. I might use green to indicate a lecture class, blue to indicate a discussion class, and maybe yellow to indicate a class that involves peer feedback or is student-led in some other way. Maybe on my PowerPoint slides, I'll use colors to emphasize key points in the passage. Language highlighted in blue shows where a poet's working with one set of images, red for another set of images, and so on. In my head, this has always been a clear and effective way of organizing and presenting data. Unfortunately, that's exactly the problem. It works in my head, but not necessarily anyone else's. It's easy to assume other people perceive colors the same way we do, but that's lazy thinking, absolutely not true. I liked to use bright primary scholars, but that was a mistake. In particular, because a very common form of color blindness makes it difficult to tell green and red apart. Other less common forms of color blindness make it hard to distinguish blue from green or yellow from red or other colors that are adjacent to one another. So for all my good intentions in color coding my teaching materials and texts, I was actually causing more problems for some people than I was solving. The solution wasn't difficult. When you're designing and color coding materials, you just have to be a bit more clever about the color palette you're using. You shouldn't use primary colors. You shouldn't use red and green as contrasting colors. That is a disaster for anyone with common red-green color blindness. Good combinations are something like blue and orange, blue and red, or blue and brown. And you should also use some other marker apart from color for distinguishing between different sets of information. For example, lighter and darker shading, or boldface and italics, or breaking up your material into several different slides instead. If you try a Google search for a chromatic vision simulator, that'll also turn out many online tools that can show you how course materials would look to students with various forms of color blindness and save you from inappropriate choices. Those are simple, easily implementable tips. Students without color blindness won't notice the difference, but those who do will find your materials as simple and easy to follow as you originally intended.